So, hi everyone, I'm Dgani, and as you can see, I'm a, the head of the counseling and support center for students with, with special needs in the Levinsky College of Education, and also I'm a disability coordinator. So accessibility is in my blood, and we are talking all, we are talking all these days about accessibility, and I thought that this time maybe we'll try to find out how, how can we really do it. We're talking about HDL, and now Ma was talking, and Thomas was talking. How can we do it? I like your three C. Where's Thomas? I'm so well. yeah. I like your three C. This is accessibility. To know, to understand, to share the student with the student. This is accessibility, and it's not easy to do it, especially when you have three thousand, um, three hundred um, students. It looks like a big problem that we'll have to try and solve it. First thing, you have to be accessible. If you want to reach everyone, you have to be accessible. What does it mean to be accessible? When you think about this, try to think about your courses and try to think what you do to be accessible because it's not easy. And I'm not sure that you do everything, but I'm sure that every one of you wants to get to each of your students. So while I will talk, you will start thinking about your accessibility in your courses. What we can do to be uh, accessible? First of all, before the course started, try to find out accessibility if somebody needs accessibility in your course. Because if you know it in the beginning, maybe you can do something during your course. But if you find it after you planned your course, it might be a bit easier, uh, difficult to, to do it. It's easier when you plan it. So just send a message, send an email. Uh, who needs accessibility? Maybe someone, one, two, five, six, will say, I need, okay, I need accessibility. I cannot read. I have problems with the uh, hearing. I, I need uh, more time doing the, uh, my uh, 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 things. Find it out first time, first uh, thing. And then, and it is so easy, but so important. Post your contact information clearly. It has to be written in a good place where everybody can see it and everybody should know where it is. And you should even record yourself and say, hi, my name is, welcome to, I'll be, uh, you can reach me at. Try to, to get a contact with your students, especially if you have many students on your, in your online courses. This is a problem. We were talking about it yesterday in the uh, groups. Quickly respond to students' questions. When, when a student has a question and nobody is answering him, and, no, and he feels like nobody sees him, he, he, he won't dare to participate. He'll, he'll drop out uh, in, uh, eventually. So try to find a way. I know this is difficult, and as Thomas said, this is something that we have to think how to, how to solve it. Maybe to work in uh, small groups. Maybe uh, we have in uh, our uh, college, I have uh, students that are mentors and for the, the mentors that are, the mentoring that they are doing, they get a discount in, uh, um, in their paying for, uh, for uh, study. So, so they want to do it. It's not a big uh, discount, but, but you feel it that you get something for your work. And, and they mentor few um, students. So maybe if you work in small groups and each group will have one a student that they know that they can reach to him, maybe it will be easier. Set scheduled times for consola uh, consolations. The students need to know when you are free to answer. Uh, yesterday we talked, uh, uh, Gal and uh, uh, Vicky said, oh, we are with the WhatsApp and we answer 24 hours a day. I don't think everyone can do it. I don't think everybody wants to do it. Yeah. You have to keep your private, I understand it. But you have, the students have to know when they can reach you. At night, in the morning, once a week, twice a month, whatever. The, it, it has to be in the, uh, uh, in the beginning of the course, you have to uh, uh, put it uh, somewhere that they know where it is and they know how to reach you. Of course, you have to be, to be flexible, but the, the, there has to be a, um, uh, something uh, routine that they can uh, reach you. Stay connected throughout the course. 
It's not once you do it and you send them away. You have to be online all the time. Maybe once in two weeks, uh, send a mail. Hi, how are you? I hope everyone is okay. Uh, I saw your work, it was uh, lovely. Stay connected so they know you're online, they know you care, they know they can reach you. Reaching out to your uh, lecturer is one of the accessible uh, things that you can do for your students. And be flexible. Sometimes it, it doesn't go as you uh, planned. So be flexible and change it. Okay? So if you do all this, I think you will promote the self, the social and emotional learning. We are talking about self. It's very difficult to be uh, um, um, social emotional with uh, 300 uh, students, but try, try and do it. Okay, try because if you'll be caring and you'll be uh, hearing and you'll be um, uh, inclusive uh, for your uh, students, maybe uh, uh, this will happen too. Because when academic lessons are more personal and relatable to students, students may be more inclined to participate and may not less likely to check out during their studies. Okay, so you will do your best and we have to figure out how we can do it. But I think that as long as you want to do it, you will find a way to do it. I, I think this is half the way <coughs> to want to do it. This is half the way to find the, the solution how to do it. Take care for order and organization. One of the things that special needs students and maybe other students, uh, uh, the lack of is a, a order and organization. If you do it for them, it will be easier to follow uh, your uh, course. So what should we do? Display timetable. What are we doing today? What will happen next week? When to hand in uh, 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 the, the work that they have to do? Be very organized and it should be in the course. The, uh, I know that in the Moodle you can uh, check, you, you, you can check when, what you did. Okay, it's, it's a good uh, thing to do. I did this. Okay, I'm, I'm uh, on the right uh, tempo. I, I am okay. Each lesson. Try to do it in each lesson. Opening, what is the opening? A summary of the uh, lesson, that everything will be very uh, uh, organized for the students. Clear and simple directions. Sometimes I hear from my students, I didn't understand anything that I read. It was such a mess. I'm just sitting with them, reading them the, the um, directions and they say, ah, okay, I understood it. So simple directions, written and oral. Remember, remember, some students have hearing problems, some students cannot see very well, and all of us, look what's going on now. I'm talking, you're looking, and together it's coming uh, uh, down. So uh, record some uh, um, um, uh, oral uh, um, directions. Okay, record yourself. Today with the Zoom, it's very easy to record and put it uh, in the course and it will be much easier for the students to understand uh, the directions. Examples, give an example, put in a, a written example that the students say, will say, oh, right, I didn't understand it. Okay, I'll see the example. Maybe it will be easier for me to follow uh, the directions. When to hand in, we talk about it. And before exam, okay, there's going to be an exam. You should uh, be ready for one, two, three. Maybe I recommend you to go back to lesson one, two and read it again and uh, do again the, the, um, the work. If it's organized and there's an order, maybe it will be easier for them. Working units. We, yesterday we saw uh, uh, courses that are with units, small steps, uh, stages, not everything all together. When students see a big, uh, a, a big balagan, you say in Hebrew, okay? <laughs> uh, many, many things written. Most of them say, okay, I don't want it. Uh, it's too much to, to me. I respond it later and later and later. And in the end, they don't do anything. So do it with small steps, each time one unit, each time uh, going uh, uh, towards uh, the end of the, um, the course and, he won't get there, uh, but but your students will get will get there in the end. 
Okay, we are all talking about uh, UDL, Universal Design for uh, Universal Design for Learning. I want to talk. I want to talk about the three main principles and how do we do it. Engagement. Look for ways to motivate learners and uh, sustain their interest. Yesterday we heard a VK thing in our college talked about motivational short films. Short films that motivate you to work. Uh, feedback, give feedback to your students. Everybody likes to get feedback. It was wonderful, good work. Just this time, it's something that somebody sees me. Somebody is, is uh, uh, looking at me and sees what I say, or what I do, it's good for them. Field of interest and the relevance. This is very important. When, it, when it's interesting to us, we are looking the, to see what's, the, what's there. When it's relevant to us, we are looking for it. So try to find fields that are uh, uh, interested. It's not always easy, not when you study, uh, I don't know. I know what's not interesting me, I don't know what's inter not interesting you, but try to do it the most interesting uh, way. The second uh, principle, representation. Offer information in more than one format. Bless you. Videos, articles, Pod, podcast, podcast, whatever you can, okay, whatever you can, be met to uh, uh, info, the, the information will be very, uh, um, uh, in, in variety of ways. Let me choose. It is important for the student, for the feeling of the students, I chose it. If I choose it, probably it was interesting for me. So you will put five things Three things, not many. I think one of the things that we understood that not a choice between many things, but I think three things to, to choose from them will be enough for them. Action ex and expression give learners more than one way to interact with their material and to show what they know. Some want to write, some wants to video themselves, so, some wants to uh, um, show you a picture and write something about it. Let them. Let them feel that they are doing it and, and they are choosing what and they can express themselves the best way they, they feel. As long as it answers the, what you look for them, want for them. Accessible content. You can, you can make your content accessible. First of all, when you use your files, Word or PDF, some of the students maybe you don't even know, use a screen reader, especially a student that they, they have a, 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 a visual, visual disability. <clears throat> if it's in a PDF, sometimes it cannot read it. So put in your course the PDF and the uh, um, a, a Word files, titles. So easy and so important, okay? Put titles that they will know exactly what they are reading, that they will know exactly what to look for. And it will be bigger and it will be bold, font. David or Arial, size 12. This is the font that, that is, um, by law is accessible. So try and use it. Not all the words that uh, all the uh, sizes, it, it is uh, confusing. And the space is one and a half. Visual and auditory channel, we talked about it. Use as many channels, uh, channels as you, as you um, uh, can. I mean, if, you ask, if, we'll ask, if I will ask you tomorrow, what do you remember from these uh, uh, three, four days? What will you remember? What do you remember from these days? <laughs> why? Exactly, yeah. why? Why, will, why? The, the ones who were yesterday? <laughs> why we will remember the songs and the food and eating together? because it was all, with all the, our senses. That's what people remember. So if you do it to your students, that they will hear and they will see, and they, and they will see it in different ways, there's a chance that they will remember and understand. Colors. Can you see what, what colors are in my uh, um, presentation? Yeah. Black and blue. You can put others, okay? I, I put, I put uh, pictures in other colors, but if you want students to see and understand 
these are the colors. Be careful from uh, red, okay? It, it's not a good color. Be careful from green, okay? A, a colorblind uh, person cannot see a, a green uh, and the red, which is uh, difficult. Um, try to be as uh, um, clear as you can with the colors. Materials and PowerPoint presentation on the course site, put them, all the materials should be there and the students can know where uh, to find them. It should be clear where to find them. Subtitles, subtitles in video or records. This is something that uh, Nama said she didn't put the uh, subtitles in her um, presentation. Try and do it. It's not easy sometimes, especially if you uh, record yourse uh, yourself, but uh, try and do it. There are uh, uh, applications that you can use to do it, so try and, uh, and do it. What about the PowerPoint presentation? What are the rules? No magic number for si of slides in the presentation. You can put as many as you want because it doesn't matter. Maybe one, uh, one slide I will talk uh, one minute and the other slide I will talk two minutes and one slide and only show, or only show a picture. Use as many as you want. Two important rules. Let the content breathe. If you have six important things to say, put each one in a different uh, slide. The, they say six on six. I mean, six sentences and six words. It's difficult, even I cannot do it. <laughs> but if you put uh, um, not a lot of uh, uh, lines and not a lot, a lot of words, you can see it, you can, you can understand it. Allow your audience to fully understand each point and remember what they saw. It is much easier to remember something like this than something that is full with the words and the lines. <laughs> it's a part of the presentation. The presentation must move, okay? It, there, there must be something interesting that's moving. Visual change color uh, should uh, occur every three seconds. A 20 minute display can contain 40 slides. It doesn't matter how many slides. There is no reason to compress them all with 10 slides that will uh, cause a little movement in front of your eyes. You can always put something like this in your uh, presentation that uh, everybody will say, oh, what is it? And they are with you again. 